Here we are in the constellation Andromeda, or at least a model of it, next to the constellation Perseus. Andromeda, in the Greek myth, was the maiden who was saved by Perseus from a sea monster. This star just above me is Beta Andromedae, the second brightest star in the constellation, 75 light years from the Earth. The light by which we see this star has spent 75 years traversing into stellar space on its journey to the Earth. In the unlikely event that Beta Andromedae blew itself up a week ago Tuesday, we will not know of it for another 75 years as this interesting information traveling at the speed of light crosses the enormous interstellar distances. When the light we see from this star set out on its long interstellar voyage, the young Albert Einstein, working as a Swiss patent clerk, had just published his epical special theory of relativity here on Earth. We see that space and time are intertwined. We cannot look out into space without looking back into time. The speed of light is very fast, but space is very empty, and the stars are very far apart. In fact, the distances that we've been talking about up to now are very small by the usual astronomical standards. In fact, the distance from the Earth to the center of the Milky Way galaxy is 30,000 light years. From our galaxy to the nearest spiral galaxy like our own, called M31, and which is also within, that means behind, the constellation Andromeda, is two million light years. When the light we see today from M31 left on its journey for Earth, there were no human beings on the Earth, although our ancestors were nicely evolving and very rapidly to our present form. There are much greater distances in astronomy. The distance from the Earth to the most distant quasars is eight or 10 billion light years. We see them as they were before the Earth itself accumulated before the Milky Way galaxy was formed. The fastest space vehicles ever launched by the human species are the Voyager spacecraft. They are traveling so fast that it's only 10,000 times slower than the speed of light. The Voyager spacecraft will take 40,000 years to go the distance to the nearest stars, and they're not even headed towards the nearest stars. But is there a method by which we could travel in a conveniently short time to the stars? Can we travel close to the speed of light? And what's magic about the speed of light? Can't we travel faster than that? It turns out that there is something very strange about the speed of light, something that provides the key to our understanding of time and space. The story of its discovery takes us to Tuscany in northern Italy. There's something almost timeless about this place. A century ago, it probably looked very much the same. If you had traveled these roads in the summer of 1895, you might have come upon a 16-year-old German high school dropout. His teacher had told him that he would never amount to anything, that his attitude destroyed classroom discipline, that he'd be better off out of school. So he left and came here, where he enjoyed wandering these roads and giving his mind free reign to explore. One day, he began to think about light, about how fast it travels, in our everyday life, we always measure the speed of a moving object relative to something else. I'm moving at about 10 kilometers an hour relative to the ground. But the ground isn't at rest. The Earth is turning at more than 1,600 kilometers an hour. The Earth itself is in orbit around the sun. The sun is moving among the drifting stars, and so on. 
It was hard for the young man to imagine some absolute standard to measure all these relative motions against. He knew that sound waves are a vibration of the air, and their speed is measured relative to the air itself. But sunlight travels across the vacuum of empty space. Do light waves move relative to something else? And if so, he wondered, relative to what? That teenage dropout's name was Albert Einstein, and his ruminations changed